Hi, this is Kirk Davis with the Center for Advanced Manufacturing Camps. I'm here today with Sarah Stewart from Impact Washington. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you this morning? Great. We're, we are here talking about uh, how to implement the you know, Come Back Safely to Work plan. And uh, Impact Washington has been up to its eyeballs and eyebrows in safety planning, huh? Yes, we sure have. <laughs> so by, lots of by way of introduction, uh, Sarah and I were just talking about this, that, that Impact Washington is really the consulting arm for Washington State in manufacturing, but uh, you guys were really called upon, I think, in this pandemic to represent manufacturing in, in the governor's office. And, and uh, I, I don't know, we've been in a lot of communication about, you know, what, uh, you know what's happening on the state level and, and what manufacturers can do about it. So you guys have had a lot of experience. And, so I'd love to hear, Sarah, just a little bit about, first of all, you and your background, and then your experience with Impact Washington during this uh, pandemic. Yeah, so um, my name is Sarah Stewart, and I work for Impact Washington. Uh, I have a degree from Iowa State in, uh, in engineering, and I've been working in manufacturing continuous improvement for, well, since 1990, so for quite a while. Um, I worked uh, mostly in the metals industry, foundries, aerospace, and also machine shops. Uh, and then I uh, joined with Impact Washington about 18 years ago. So I've been working continuous improvement, primarily as an in implementer of lean and quality management systems, Six Sigma and Kata. For, That's very for cool. The of that time. That's interesting. Yeah. Interesting work. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And then, uh, boy, it seems like our conversations lately have been a lot more about the pandemic and... <laughs> manufacturing yeah. <laughs> and well we were uh we were called upon by the state to help uh uh transitioning with with some good success and some some frustration as well to be honest i think uh lots of folks seeing this might see might recognize the name uh but we were trying really hard to help uh companies transition to making ppe yeah and that got in the beginning it was it was it was a little difficult because um, the hospitals really needed class one, class two devices, yeah. and that requires an FDA certification. And that was a little daunting. So um, we worked on that for a little bit, but we were able to help some companies transition, and that was very satisfying. Uh, and then we moved on through uh, Impact Washington is actually part of a national network, I should say. Yeah. So there's one of us in each state, and we're called the Manufacturing Extension Program, modeled after the Agriculture Extension Program for those who are who are used to that, we're the manufacturing version of that. Yes. Uh, and so we, uh, as part of the CARES Act, uh, the uh, federal government gave some money to help companies prevent COVID in the workplace and come back to work safely. That's and that great. filtered down through the MEP. So we've got some grant money available to help companies do that. And again, when, when uh, people need to find manufacturers, they come to our organizations and say, who do you know, right? So that's yes, kind of how we exactly. got involved in this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and I think uh, a big part of going back to work safely uh, is it's a mandate to have a, a safety plan that addresses the CDC and the Washington State guidelines. It, it is mandatory, but I think it's, it's important for uh, other reasons. You know, we know a lot of things from our lean work and our quality management system work that establishing standard work is just a good idea. I think we, we are all used to that as manufacturers. Standards and practices, yes. And standards practices, yeah. And so documenting those, especially for the, the COVID stuff, I know it can be, you know, um, people do view it different ways. But one yeah. thing when you, when you write it down, what it does, we're finding is that it's, it's uh, not only required, but it also helps instill employee confidence mm -hmm. because you're taking the ambiguity out of how your particular organization feels about this stuff, about what's right for you guys. There's a big difference between, you know, 18 guys working in a big warehouse and folks on an assembly line all, all smushed together. Mm -hmm. Each manufacturer is different and each solution is going to be different for each person. Yeah, that, that's a really great point. Or each manufacturer. That, that is such a good point that every situation, every layout, every work line is going to be different depending on the situation and may re have different safety requirements. Right. So that's why we're, we're, um, you know, we're getting lots of questions. Can't you just send me one? Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and we can, we've got a template that, that we can work with you on, but, but what it is in there is it's like, you need to train your employees. 
how are you going to do that? There's yeah. lots of ways to train employees. There's lots of ways to do that. Uh, and it needs to be in a way that's right sized for your organization. And we firmly believe that. So now there's we, a difference, and you and I talked about this, but there's a difference between a plan is something you're going to do, but uh, a management document is what you're doing, right? You're, right. That's just uh, the state calls it a plan but we're actually treating it more as a quality manual or a safety manual. I like documenting that. Documenting something that you've, that you've done and implemented, a living document that will change as, as uh, things change and you learn yeah. things. Yeah, and I think um, uh, there's so many implications here, but uh, one, one of the things has to do with masks. So, yeah. I mean, that's a new thing. And of course, I, I, think, uh, I think everybody's on top of this topic, but, uh, there could be different mask requirements. Is that right? Uh, there are, and and what it what it boils down to is your risk for uh, infection. So, uh. Uh, so if you're like uh, if you're somebody who is a manufacturer and your dr driver is delivering to, let's say a retirement home, that's one situation. Compared to somebody who's welding under a boat all day, that's another situation. So okay. they've got it listed by risk. And so uh -huh. I would say for most of our manufacturers here in the, in the Puget Sound area that I've seen, we're going to be at the negligible low risk. And so uh, cloth masks would be, yeah. would be adequate. And that's why I've, yeah, I've seen a lot of the cloth masks and the company would have to make some decisions about uh, those purchasing decisions, making them available and, and mm -hmm. all of that. Right. And, yep. uh, but I think that also, uh, I've seen companies actually doing uh, taking steps to help to help their employees, you know, wash or or sterilize the masks, the reusable uh, ones. Yeah, some people are are doing that. Some people are uh, simply providing instructions uh, and saying, "Here's how you do it," that kind yeah. of thing. And uh, so it, it's all again just what works for. For so, so some people are actually doing the laundry for them, sending it out with the uniforms. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, it's just really, these are just, again, these are decisions that a company has to make of how are we going to do this, right? Yep. And, and just like a, just like a quality manual, how are you going to maintain quality? How are you going to maintain your safety? So it's, it's the same policy decisions that becomes the hard part. That, and that's why, our, that's exactly why we don't recommend just copying over what somebody else has, has written because what works for them may not work for you. Well, you know, and there's company, no right answer. Well, companies have to really consider the fact that uh, they want to retain their skilled employees. Skilled employees are very hard to come by. Mm -hmm. And if you're not taking safety seriously, and I, in my experience visiting many, many manufacturing shops, everybody takes safety very, very seriously. And I haven't seen any difference now. I think every, every company I've talked to is, is taking this very seriously. Yes, I would agree with that. These yep. guidelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've noticed too is a consideration of the vendors who may come in, you know, uh, you know, for shipping or uh, changing out the water bottle or, you know, a vendor who's, you know, fixing equipment. So people who come from the outside may also need to know your safety plan or have it posted on the door. But uh, there's, there's uh, some companies are even doing a little bit of safety briefing for, for the people who come into their business necessarily. Yeah, and that's that's not an unusual. There's safety briefings when you go into some of our heavier manufacturers, you get a safety briefing there as well. Uh, what we're recommending is that most people have a visitor protocol when you come to the front desk and you sign yeah. in anyway. Uh, you can either make, write down those rules there and have people read them if, if that's, um, yeah. if you don't have that, you could also better yet incorporate it into your current protocols. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not unusual for me to go in and sign, uh, you know, a, a proprietary statement, a no camera statement, a wear your safety glasses statement. And so with that, you could incorporate these things that go there if you've already got that process in place. That's great. Yeah. So, you know, masks, masks are, are one thing. Uh, the, the distancing is, is now becoming another issue, right? Just maintaining that six foot distance when possible. Correct. Yeah. And so what have you seen out there? What, what's been your experience with that? Um, well, there's a lot of working at home, right? Mm -hmm. Still, there's a lot of people working remote. I've seen uh, a couple of companies where they've repurposed um, different 
work areas or different mm. uh, storage rooms, that kind of thing, to turn those into offices where people can now work alone. That's the office area. Oh wow! It gets it gets a little different on the uh, on the line, but most people I think are reporting that they're able to find a way to um, to physically distance for the bulk of the day. And but what the what the process is is when you do that safety walk, which we haven't talked about, where you actually go through and walk and look and try to find those places that 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 aren't in the forefront of your mind. Um, those those are the areas where people tend to have the most trouble. So they're reporting that they're able to get the physical distance for the most part um, in the daily work. It's more like locker rooms, gowning rooms, where people are having to get more creative. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, it seems like training and communication are a very important part of this. And we were talking earlier about a cultural, you know, that, that some people may not be on board with all these safety precautions for some reason, you know, and, and others, others may adapt it pretty easily, but, but there can be some, uh, a culture, if you will, of resistance. And what's, what's been your, your experience working with this? And I know you've had a lot of that experience with your process improvement work too. Right. And that's what I was going to say. I think, I think we know how to do that. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's, if we keep falling back, I don't think this COVID thing really is that much different from any of the work we do to get people to adopt other things. I may not like somebody giving me an internal audit for my quality system either, but that's part of what, what we do. And so that's why writing it down. So there's, it gets rid of the, the confusion about what is required and what isn't can go a long way to building employee confidence and employee buy-in, right? Or at least not buy-in, but they'll, they'll live with it. Well, I like um, the buy-in. As long buy as the rules are clear, right? Now, um, and do you have any guidance or ideas on like, I when I go into sh into manufacturing uh, places, they, they have signs on the wall for lean practices. Mm -hmm. So they're lean steps and watch for these wastes and, and uh, you know, say, here's my safety steps. And I don't know, I would signage help here at all? Uh, with some yeah, it's, it, it does because, uh, well, one, it's a requirement in the state guidance. There's particular th signage that you need to post in order to enhance training, right? That's really mm -hmm. what it is, is to enhance the training that somebody's received as reminders. It's, it's why we have, uh, uh, not that everybody follows them, but it's why we have nice markers with the speed limit on the highway, right? There we go. Right. <laughs> right? It's, it's uh, one reminders. of reminders one of those things to keep safety into the forefront. So uh, the requirements I think that, that are needed is you need to have signage. They're all over the, uh, you know, the sites, but it's proper technique for washing your hands, oh, uh, yeah. proper technique for hand sanitizer, proper technique for sneezing and coughing. Um, so that's all clearly listed in that guidance. And so um, you can call us. We've got tons of signs that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's great Happy to know. Happy to forward that. those links to you. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we, we have a, a member of camps, Bowman, Bowman Dispensers, and I've seen that they also have, you know, signs like this. And so, again, if, if signs are a, a, of interest, because I think they are a helpful reminder and a way to reinforce, you know, what we're trying to do here. So, um, you know, uh, washing your hands, how to cough and sneeze, and uh, hand sanitizer are big things. Um, I, I uh, we have an office here at TriTech, and 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 so I receive safety briefing. I, I have my temperature taken every day. Um, mm -hmm. If I am out of country or if I have a, you know possibly been exposed, they have a form for me to fill out and sign. And uh, they, they're just doing a really first class job over here. But I, I was impressed with their hand sanitizer. It's in a bottle with their label, with their logo and name on it. Right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, I yeah. mean, you can have some fun. I'm just saying you can have some fun with it, too. It doesn't have to be all drudgery, right? Yeah, no. It, it, to me, uh, this it, it feels like drudgery, but it, it doesn't have to be. It's just kind of, to me, it's the same thing we do all the time around yeah. quality and, and regular safety. We know how to do this, and, and we're good at it. And so... Um, so from your point of view and what you've studied, because you're, you're probably as studied on this as anybody, uh, Sometimes what we're kind of saying now in this environment is we're 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 wearing masks and we're taking these safety precautions not just to keep ourselves safe but to also keep other people safe. That's correct. Yep, that's the no. the the reason for um, the research is these cloth masks are not going to stop the virus from coming in, but.
but it is going to definitely keep the whatever's coming out of your mouth close to you. <laughs> so less likely to be right. creating these clouds, you know, these, yeah. these breath clouds, yeah, that uh, spread it. But you know, what's interesting is something that people may not know or understand is that that your coworker may have a loved one at home and it, it might be elderly parents or it could be children who have certain vulnerabilities. So, so again, you know, this is a, I think this is a safety precautions we take as a company and with each other, because it's not, not so much that I'm worried I'm going to get sick or I'm worried you're going to get sick, but it could be that somebody you live with or somebody you visit that you care about. So, you know, this, again, I've just, I've heard that logic and I wondered if that holds up from your point of view and your studies. It, it does, but uh, you know, that's kind of when we're consulting with Impact Washington, because a lot of people have different ways of thinking about things, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're trying to hold uh, to the line that here's what the guidance says. This is what you need to implement because it, it, it really does eliminate the opinion. It, you can ah. read it and it's right there. And, and, um, it, it really is kind of like reading the ISO standard. So how you go about doing that, right, is up to you. So we're just trying to keep um, keep it to the guidance that the state has given, the requirements that LNI is going to hold people accountable to, and and go from there. And keeping it very matter of fact, very very forward, very you know that kind of thing. So I, you know I think from a from a safety and caring point of view is one point of view from a, maybe from a business ownership point of view, it's a risk aversion because Definitely. we want to demonstrate that we're doing all we can in terms of a, you know, a plan and a management system, our safety briefings and all of these, you know, all of these steps that we take are a way to prevent risk. But uh, the, the other thing, the other thing that I was thinking about was that um, there are something you shared with me and, and some other people from Impact Washington have shared is that, when when companies take advantage of the free assessment that you make available, uh, there are just some considerations that that they miss here and there. I mean, on their own, they try their very best. It's very complicated to try to create your own plan. Right. Uh, it, it's it's really just a second pair of eyes looking at it, uh, and, but and a very well educated yeah, well, that second set of eyes. Right. Yeah. Been there, done that. I know you've done many of these. Yeah, and our, my team has as well. We've got some highly uh, yeah. competent people in health and safety helping us uh, do this. But yeah, so it's a second pair of eyes. But I think more importantly, just like when we follow a lean process or any kind of process, we have a process that we follow so that we don't miss the things that you would make if you were perhaps just typing up a plan in your in your office. So we actually do a tour and we actually look at the stuff and, and see what's going on. And we look at the current state, talk about the future state. This should all sound pretty familiar to you, to the yeah. audience. And, uh, and then we write down what, what the company uh, uh, is doing. And, and most often they're, they've got, I would say most folks have about 70% of it in place. Sure. They just kind of, kind of get it together and they got to make one or two tweaks and uh and but, but there's a harder way to do it without Impact Washington, and there's an easier way to do it with Impact Washington. We'd right? like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's there's no cost to this. They no, just, not at they, all. They can call. They can call. Uh, our website is probably the best place to go. There's a button there on the corner, and mm -hmm. uh, depending on your location, these are all done remotely, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so we are doing these remotely because we feel it's important for the protocols to be in place before anybody shows up. So we do them remotely. Yeah. Um, and uh, so basically you sign up and we'll assign one of our esteemed professionals. They'll give you a call and, and, um, and it takes about four hours, two, two to four mm -hmm. hours, depending on the size and questions that people have. So usually yeah. there's like a, there's like a, a virtual tour where we walk around. We actually, follow the path employees would walk during the day. Um, uh, it's like, okay, now we'll go to lunch. Now we go to break. Yeah. Uh, and then we um, look at what visitors will do. Then we'll write the report and then we'll have a report out the end where we present what we found and recommendations. That's the first part. Then if uh, you'd still like help with the plan, we can help with that too, or the manual, we can help with that as well. Okay, this is, this is so good to know. 
because again, I think this is something that is such a good idea, but you're prepared to help every step of the way and to make it an easier process. So once it's done, it's done. And it's done to a very, you know, to the uh, to all the right standards. So again, it's it's nothing. There, there's not going to be anything nagging you in the back of your mind saying, "Did I do that right?" You, you right, did it right. exactly. And and it, it's a learning curve thing. You know, the first one I did took a while, but now I've done a lot, and so <laughs> people have the benefit of, yeah, uh, you know, that's just it. It's uh, there's so many good reasons, uh, even beyond the free assessment, to call Impact Washington. So uh, we've been partners. We've been working together for years. We have, so I've, I've had several camps members express to me how good that free assessment was. Oh, good, good, good. that's good. So, so we're here, we're, you have raving fans. And, uh, and what's also interesting is camps members will often say to us, uh, we appreciate camps, we love the networking and community and getting to know people. They said one of the, the best things ever happened to us was meeting Impact Washington. And, yeah. and that, that's something that we hear pretty consistently among all the members of camps. And so it's been great to have this partnership with you. It and really has. It really yeah. Has. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, again, there, there's more reasons than just the free assessment to call Impact Washington if you're listening to this today. And we appreciate your partnership. We appreciate your friendship. And uh, any last words about uh, the, the free assessment or um, anything you'd like to say to, any, to everybody before we go? Um, it's just kind of the same thing that, uh, you know, there's a couple of reasons in and above that it's requirement. The first one is it will help keep your employees safe. I've had a couple people express to me that, you know, I, I can't afford an outbreak here. I just can't. Yeah. From, uh, from a business perspective. Everybody. Yeah, I can't afford an outbreak here. Um, so it's going to keep people safe. The second reason is it's going to instill employee confidence, and we think that's one of the most important uh, things. If your employees feel like they're safe, then um, that's going to help things go smoother. And then the third one, and probably the least important, but still important, is if a situation ever does arise, it's a, you'll have a documented doc, a document with your thought process about why you made the decisions that you made. And that will be then documented in case anybody asks any questions. So those are the three reasons we think this sure. is. And that always it. seems to, to be come up and there's always a good reason to have a, all that documented. I, I've learned over time. Yeah. So, well, Sarah, I want to say thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and a delight. And I think we all, you know, gained a lot of great information from, from listening to you today. All right. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yep. We will look forward to seeing more in the future. Okay. Bye Take everybody. <laughs> Bye.